First things first, you've got to figure out your lead leg, your stance width, binding placement, and your angles. All things related to your stance are very personal. You may experiment and adjust your stance until you find what works best for you. But to help you get started, there are a few simple things you can do. Let's start with your lead leg. If you surf, skateboard, or wakeboard, you already know if you're regular or goofy. For everyone else, put on a pair of slippery socks and slide across the wood floor. Regular riders, which is most people, have their left foot forward, and goofy riders have their right foot in front. Now determine your stance width. You can always go with the recommendation of the manufacturer or try to customize. Here are some guidelines. Measure the distance from your kneecap to the floor. Your stance should be about that wide. As a minimum, your stance should be wide enough for your hips to fit between your bindings. Depending on the type of board and riding goals, your stance will either be centered on the snowboard, as with a twin tip park board, or set back slightly, as with an all mountain board. Since this is a powder board, we'll go with the manufacturer's recommendation and set it back two inches, which is quite a bit. If you plan to resell your snowboard, it's a good idea to place rubber gasket between the top sheet and bindings. You can pick this up at your nearest hardware store. Not only does it keep the graphics pristine, it also adds a little cushion under your feet, and who doesn't need that? Simply trace, cut, and place under each binding. Now down to business. Measure your stance width on the inserts that are on the board. You want to measure from the center of each group of inserts. It'll either be four or three depending on your manufacturer. Put your front binding on. Be sure to grab the correct binding. Yes, there is a right and a left. Your bindings are contoured to each foot just like your boots. To make it easier, the spiky plastic strap is usually on the outside. Now put the back binding in place and measure from center to center to make sure your width is right. Line up the holes in your base plate with the insert pattern so that each hole has its very own insert. Grab your screws and some Teflon tape. You can find the tape at any hardware store in the plumbing section. Wrap the Teflon tape around the threads of each screw. While this step isn't mandatory, it will help the screws stay tight, and that's a good thing. Drop a screw in each hole, and with your Phillips number three, screw it in until it just begins to grab. Now it's time to add some angle. No one should have a zero degree stance. Never. At zero degrees, your feet are more likely to hang over the side and get in the way. Also, it's very hard to get enough flexibility to work the board. Don't believe me? Stand with your feet dead ahead, about hip width apart, and go into a deep squat. It's not so easy. Now try putting your feet in a duck stance. Much better. Angle gives stability and flex. The duck stance you just tried in your squat is a good beginner stance. Grab hold of the high back and crank your front binding 12 degrees. That's four notches over. Rotate your back binding to about negative six degrees or two clicks over. Remember, the screws should be inserted but not tight. Once you've got your angle set, use that number three screwdriver and tighten down your screws. Don't crank one screw at a time. Go around in a circle or in a crisscross pattern to make sure everything is nice and even. While it looks ready, you're still not done. You've got to rotate your high backs. Notice how they are currently at an angle. That's wrong. You want your high back to be parallel with the heel edge. This gives you more precise control over your heel side turns by giving more pressure along the full length of the edge and it gives you better flexibility for boning out those tricks. You'll thank me later. Grab a number two Phillips and loosen the screws on the sides of the bindings. Grab the high back and twist until it's parallel with the heel edge and tight to the heel cup. Not so fast, you've still got to adjust the straps. Riding without adjusting the straps, that's like running without tying your shoes. Grab your boot and place it in the binding. Tighten the straps. If the straps look tight without too much extra stuff hanging off, then lucky you, you're all done. If not, Use a number two screwdriver or your hands and loosen the straps on the side. Slide it forward or back so that your straps cup the boot nicely. Follow the instructions on your bindings since each model is a little different. There's a pretty good chance that your bindings will stretch out during the season, so a little tighter is better than too loose. Check for loose parts. 
Try everything on to make sure things fit right and tight. Bend your knees and flop around to make sure the stance is comfortable. It's better to adjust now than on the hill while your friends are all waiting and a 10 below zero wind is raging on your bare hands. If things feel good, you're ready to ride. Congratulations, you just mounted your own snowboard.